all these years I didn't want to buy a CRT. I really, I really want to, I, I'm just a simplistic person. I just want the easiest solution and I was able to make compromises. Now, there are different things that actually happened to change it, but one thing what actually very important is when I play Wonder Boy on a CRT in a retro gaming store. Now, until now I played it, uh, the Nintendo Switch version, which has all the different versions for different consoles and with also built-in filters. And it's so deeply embedded in my brain that I immediately feel if I see even something slightly different, I'm going to see it, I'm going to feel it. So even if I play a certain version, I know which one is because I just used to play various versions of them, I mean from the collection. And until now, for many games that I play, I, I said, okay, this is fine, I actually enjoy it. I mean, I didn't feel that I'm actually missing something. I go and there are lots of options to change, for example, uh, with the background, of course, uh, brightness, saturation, and play with the shaders, just get something that, well, you, for me, I can speak for myself, I will react more emotionally to the game because it, it's gonna take something that connects me to the memories back then, how we used to play it, and that's how I prefer playing it. It's just fine tuning the focus to the neurons in my memory, it just give me that great feeling, and, and of course, something, from it connected to the memories in the past, how I used to enjoy uh, playing the game visually, but also something that just enjoy looking at. I mean, some of course of the effects I didn't like. And as you can see, you can really play and fine tune it. Uh, I mean, there are really good options here, lots of different options, even choosing the curvature, the sharpness, lots of different options to really fine tune and get like the perfect result that is just perfect for you. Also playing again with the curvature to give this kind of uh, distortion effect that gives you an effect like you're actually watching it on TV, which is really cool. Fine tune the curve, control the roundness of the corners, choose different uh, gamma settings. So basically it's not about the curves here, it's about the, the imperfections, but more how I react to it emotionally. Now for me it was fine. I played so many hours of this game. Again, this is one of my favorite games, uh, retro games. And after that, I even just straight flat, I sent it to my Elgato um, capture card and then to the screen and then apply an overlay uh, filter. There are different really cool open source one. This is, for example, uh, a relatively new one, Shader Glass on Steam. It's free, you can actually check it out. Here, actually, they also play a bit with the movement of the scan line, just to give you kind of the feeling of, of uh, something organic, rather than something static and flat. And I'm the person who say, if it's just great and I enjoyed why even bother buying a CRT? I, what, why I need to mess around with it? I didn't want to. Honestly, I didn't want to. So then I go also buying the cartridges, the console. I didn't want to mess around with it. So well, there, there were a few things that actually made me uh, do the shit, but it was again when I visited the retro gaming store that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. This was kind of realization that, well, I'm actually all the things that I try and I try many different filters and options, trust me, I'm kind of a freak when it comes to that. It just wasn't the same. And you don't need to believe what I'm saying here at all. You can just check it out for yourself and just see whatever you prefer. Maybe you won't prefer it. I'm not saying also that every game will benefit from it uh, highly. Some games it will be fine. Some games you might prefer playing on a CRT. Now I've seen it played on many uh, screens. I also have here a 4K uh, a QLED and also a fast HVA display. I went to the store also to see uh, how it plays on the OLED, not specific this game, but other games. And it just wasn't the same. So what actually makes this huge difference? I mean, I thought to myself, well, why, why it actually matter? Why I'm seeing something that I react more emotionally and I like better compared to everything that I did before? I mean, aside from the fact that these games were designed to run on CRTs from the get-go. Well, I'm not a professional, so I can't really speak too much technically, although I read a bit, of course, trying to understand and kind of cross this information with what I see with my eyes, what I like. When I look at my CRT, in this case, this is a Sony Trinitron display, uh, it feels organic, it feels alive. And this is because how the technology works, it's so much different compared to what we have now. Like in, in a CRT display, for example, light appears, fades, disappears, and then redrawn. On conventional screen, let's say OLED, for example, uh, pixels are turned on, they hold the frame, wait, and update the whole screen at once. Now, it's not about something being perfect. It's actually the secret is in the imperfection. Because all this time I tried to perfect things, but when I saw the imperfect, the imp I like the imperfect better. 
So things regarding motion clarity, yeah, flicker behavior, age, sharpness in motion, how gradients are displayed. And one thing that I tried really to focus on that is something that you can clearly well see. You don't pay a lot of attention to it at first, but it makes a huge difference. This is the phosphor glow. It kind of rises fast, fades gradually, and then overlaps between frames. On conventional display, let's take OLED for example, it stops instantly, instantly, there's no natural decay and no light memory. And that decay uh, blends gradients beautifully, soften edges, and also create perceived depth. Now, the thing with filters, they rely on, on math, an algorithm, to simulate the complex analog physics of CRT. For example, motion blur. Modern display hold the image steady, causing blur during movement that filters just can't fix perfectly. It also how light uh, spread in CRT's light spread uh, physically and seamlessly, and filters must use fixed digital pixels to approximate this soft analog bloom, which is never a perfect match. The game just feel, I mean the game, the, the TV just looks like a living organic canvas that the game just beautifully interact with. Also things related to blacks uh, when it comes to, uh, it just feel three dimensional. Uh, it doesn't look flat. Still, you're going to get deep blacks, but it feels like this kind of like a universe behind it. It feels like things are kind of uh, uh, three-dimensional, like the text, for example, that you see here and the black. When you see it, of course, from a relatively uh, longer distance, it feels like it's kind of floating there. This also becomes even more beautiful with a reflective glass that is not uh, made. So again, it's not huge, but it's all these little things that together add up to the overall experience. And you can clearly see, by the way, here, bright pixels, kind of larger spots. Dark pixels, smaller spot. Pixel in quotation in this case. And this, what you see, very. this is a macro shot, very close. So this leads to uh, kind of a native auto anti-aliasing. Uh, a beautiful glow bloom and, and color merging beautifully together and natural blur uh, only of course were needed and with modern uh, displays uh, pixel size never changes it's just fixed same goes to every sub pixel it's rigid and of course no algorithm in the world can change physical pixel size per brightness now with CRT, of course, we also have scan lines. And for example, if you want more brightness, you create thicker lines. If you want very high white, you know, you create, you know, you have the bloom. If you want to create dark scenes, you have tighter lines. On modern display, let's say OLED, for example, it just draws static lines. There's no brightness-based deformation. In other words, CRTs are analog reactive system. All the displays, for example, are just static geometry. And this is something very important regarding the bloom. It's so important for me. And you see, when it comes to filter, they use a math-based blur, let's say Gaussian blur, for example, to simulate bloom. But they can't make the line physically thicken uh, in an analog way, like it does on CRT. The blur often looks like an effect rather than physically part of the light source. CRTs, for example, react instantly to power load of the image. As I mentioned, more bright pixel equal more current equal thicker lines. This is an organic analog feedback loop. Filters, for example, when you use it on a modern display, are applied after the image is rendered, drawing a static mask that remains the same size regardless of how many bright pixels are underneath it. Now, of course, most modern uh, displays are mate and flat. And in this case, of course, it's true to also other uh, CRTs. This is kind of more curved and reflective. And the difference here lies in how light interacts with the screen surface. CRTs with their slightly curved glossy glass act like a soft lens. The reflections and eternal light diffuse subtly. So this creates a look where bright areas, for example, have a soft specular glow and highlights have greater depth. Uh, this physical light diffusion naturally boosts the uh, perceived color richness and micro contrast by making the bright spot pop against the darker areas. And in contrast, if you take OLED, for example, they are flat and mate, uh, which removes the, this diffusion effect, basically. 
This eliminates the natural highlight glow and requiring the display to rely entirely on the digital image data. So from the viewer perspective, they feel that it results in less dynamic looking highlights and less pop uh, than the physically enhanced CRT image. For me, just like watching, for example, a picture uh, on, on a screen compared to watching it, you know, like it is in a museum, for example. Seeing, for example, how the light reflects on the, on the curve of the, of the paint uh, on the image, especially when you're moving a bit from side to side. All of this is something that you can just replicate on a display. I mean, unless you move things around, but again, we are talking about retro games here, right? So uh, most of them, of course, are just flat 2D. And even those 3D games in the past didn't have the technology to create something that can create something as special as this. So just for this specific point, for example, uh, if we're talking about, I told you about if there was a modern game, how it would feel like, this is the difference compared to playing like on a flat and just on a screen and playing a certain game in virtual reality. So in VR, for example, because of this subtle movement, and of course you, you're there and also close to it, but the subtle movement that how it actually affects a light, getting into your, I mean, eyes from the different location that you move your head, uh, leads to a much higher realism. But this is just a specific thing. Of course, when you play in VR, you still see, of course, a flat, but it's designed to actually give you a three-dimensional perspective. So you see, even OLED can beat it. I mean, it could have, if it had, for example, scanned uh, line by line with decay, uh, had brightness dependent pixel shapes, had phosphor emulation in time, had beam jitter and bloom, used curved glass optics, and add per pixel fade time memory, but it doesn't. Even if you take the perfect software, it just can't emulate electrons in glass. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the games I do play, uh, I mean, some of them I actually don't have on the, on the console yet, but some of them I do play and I do enjoy it. But it doesn't matter. Shader cannot simulate, for example, electron beam dynamics, uh, chemical light decay, overlapping phosphor emission, thermal bloom, or electrical instability. Again, it's about the imperfections. Each color phosphor, for example, on CRT decays at a different speed. Red, green, and blue fade at different rates. This creates color trailing, glow persistence, and subtle chroma bleed. And with shaders, for example, you get a fake blur, fake glow, and fake hollow. Having said all that, there are some really incredible ones, with some of them actually doing a much better job than others. Like CRT Royal, for example, you're able to simulate phosphor layout, uh, beam shape, subpixel glow, scan like structure, bloom behavior, gamma response, shadow mist patterns, color bleed, brightness base, beam width, uh, slowed mask, and other aperture grill modes, and also some kind of a, how the game looks with different cables. And if you use it, of course, with a high resolution display, let's say 4K, it can kind of try to mimic those subtle changes that you need, of course, high resolution in order to make it more believable. And because of that, of course, some aspects of it design so well that you probably won't be able to tell, again, certain aspects of it. And some of them will be best on a 4K, for example, uh, all the display, but some of them are very heavy, they require strong GPU and needs lots of tweaking. Now, for example, if you want to use CRT Real, it's best for 4K OLED or Mini LED. Um, guest uh, Dr. Venom, for example, is good for 1440p uh, gaming monitor. Uh, CRT Genom Deluxe uh, can even work with laptop and low power uh, uh, computers. Uh, CRT Easy Mode, for example, can use as a web emulation. For example, if you go to uh, weblibero.com, you can kind of uh, play around with tons of different options, and different shaders and, and tweak it. And of course, there are download options. This is just to go into the rabbit hole. There are so many options out there and some of them are very, very impressive. But again, reality check is that even the best shader, uh, it can recreate beam scanning. It can not emulate phosphor decay. Uh, it cannot change pixel physics. Uh, it cannot remove all its sample and hole blur. It cannot simulate curved glass reflections. So all it can do is paint the look and do a pretty good job at it, but it just cannot recreate the experience. So this is just a realization. CRT emulation is software perfect, yes, but CRT experience is hardware impossible on modern displays. Well, at least for now, maybe something will change down the road. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not a technical expert. For me, what actually made a decision is not me reading a lot and trying to understand a lot. It's just seeing it and feeling it. 
I didn't need to think about it. It just happened what I felt. How all my senses experience what is in front of me compared to what other thing was in front of me before it. It's like trying the best you can to let, make me feel how it would be like being outside looking at the sun, my eyes closed and just feeling the warmth of the sun while doing it on a, well, it doesn't matter, let's say on the OLED display. It won't happen. This is something that my brain interpret that is a combination probably of light reaching my eyes. The way I perceived all of this without even thinking about it, it just feels different. You know, it's like when you have something and you think like it's amazing, it's perfect. Only when you see something side by side or you try something right after the other, you can really understand the differences. I felt the same thing when I bought new headphones, open back headphones. Before that, I used like, you know, closed back headphones. When I realized one day that I'm playing on 60 Hertz and I forgot that I can actually play, for example, a 144 Hertz on my previous display and suddenly everything just stopped. Then I realized, oh my God, what's the difference? And of course, later on, when I moved to much higher refresh rate and seeing the difference, like the picture just hold itself. Things like that, and then you realize the difference between two things, the first experience and the better one that came after. Now here, the thing is that it's not a new technology. We are talking about the old technology, but with all its imperfections, because again, the technology is a thing of the past. It's not used today. I mean, it's not being made today. We already moved to new technologies. So though I try to understand the specifics, what actually, why I feel like this, I mean, because I just couldn't understand, I mean, why I just can't stay with the filters. I, and eventually, of course, because I saw the difference, I decided to buy a CRT. And of course, after having one myself and trying many games, it's, it becomes even more prominent than I thought than ever before. And because it eventually boils down to how I feel, I just felt that it's so much better for me. It doesn't matter which shader I use, it just instantly grabbed me I decided to buy a CRT. And that's the reason, that's my little story about all that. And probably I'll, maybe I'll discover more things that led me to understand more fully about what actually led to it. But these are some of the things based on what I've read, of course. But it boils down to what I feel. I just enjoy it more, much more when I play on the CRT. And that's why I bought it. Your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching.